How's it going, New World? Sephir here, and it is that time again, the time where we take a look at the PTR and tell you all of the goodies and secrets that are coming up so that you can make a huge gold profit. Yes, we are going to be talking today about what kind of opportunity changes are going to be coming into New World, which is going to allow you to make quite a considerable large sum of profit if you're paying attention to what's going on. So currently we have the mutated dungeon system that is on the PTR client and it is going to be changing the way that the economy is going to demand certain items and I'm going to tell you all about that. So first we're going to talk about a few professions and then we're going to talk about the reasoning behind those and what's required for mutated dungeons. That's going to be the big centerpiece and focus for this. So first up we're going to go ahead and talk about, yep, you guessed it, Stone cutting, big surprise there. Stone cutting coming in again with a top winner in this patch coming up here. Being able to craft the mutated keys. These are going to be one time per week. So you're gonna need all of the ingredients required for this. So we have a few lists on the components here. So Asmodium Chisel is something you're gonna get for the faction vendor. You will purchase this with faction tokens and gold. Corrupted Lodestone is something that you farm from portals. Everybody knows this at the moment. And you're just gonna combine them up until you hit the legendary version. The Runestone is a daily cooldown. 24 hours you can make 10 of them and you will be able to make this with 200 stone cutting so if you don't have 200 stone cutting already make sure to go ahead and get it and then finally we have energy cores energy core is the combination of the eternal and elemental heart so it's basically saying you need five times 50 of every single moat in the game so moats are going to go up once again because everyone's going to need them to craft these orbs and they're also going to go up from some other areas that we will talk about here in a bit and then the final thing on our list is going to be powerful gemstone dust. This is a very good consumable that's used in wars a lot. It's going to give you 35% elemental damage absorption for 20 seconds. It's very strong in the mutated dungeons, but it's also required to make the mutated orb. So it's now double, triple required. Good for wars, good for dungeons, and good for crafting. So you're going to need all of these. Powerful gemstone dust is created from an armor when you smash up three pristine gems, or sorry, three uncut gems of any purple rarity. So if it's a purple gem and it's uncut, then you can smash them up and turn it into gemstone powerful dust. So that's going to be for stone cutting. Make sure to have that. And as always, if you don't have 200 stone cutting, make sure to grab it. Make sure to grab yourself a stone cutter self and, uh, set and do yourself a favor because you're going to be able to make more fragments, which means you have to spend less time farming. But the the good news here is that there is some minor changes to the Genesis and Lazarus tuning orbs. You can now make two Lazarus orbs and only two Genesis, so that got nerfed a little bit. But these will become a little bit less popular now since the mutated dungeons are going to be out, and they're probably going to take priority over everything else. So that's going to be it for stone cutting. And then the next thing we're going to have to talk about is going to be Arcana, because we're going to start talking about consumables. So all consumables are going to go up in price. If you have not got your consumables already, go ahead and do it. Stock up on the resources that you already have. Maybe even check out your market and see if there's some cheap things that you can go ahead and get. But everything that's used inside of dungeons is going to be very, very, very high demand. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at Arcana, which is going to be a strong winner this past. Normally we have potions being on a decently high list, but with the recent changes of the chests allowing them to drop a lot of potions, and by a lot I mean a lot, none of these like health pot, mana pot, regen pot, they're very common, you're going to get a lot of them if you're doing chest runs. They may go up in demand a little bit because I found myself chugging like 50 mana pots, 50 health pots, 50 regen pots, especially in the higher uh, mutated dungeon keys so these might go up a tiny bit but I don't know if they'll go up too much because you could do one chest run and max out your pots really quick right so pl people will still be doing plenty of these but the big ones that are going to go in is any of these coatings the infused coatings well maybe not any let's correct that the corrupted the ancient and the angry earth these three specifically are going to be in demand because so far we know that there will be a dynasty shipyard mutation dungeon as well as Lazarus and Garden of Genesis. We don't know of any others yet at the moment that have been confirmed, keyword yet, but we do know that these three are going to go up. So when we take a look at these ingredients, that means that we're going to be prioritizing these items here. Piranha Tooth, I believe, is obtained from fishing, um, from salvaging like some sort of weird fish. 
And then the other ones are all from the elemental animals that you find in the wild. Um, not like actual animals that you kill, but you know, the ones that are setting on like a tree stump or whatever. So it's going to be like the salamander slime, the blight moth, the lightning beetle. All of those are going up. That's what it takes for coatings. And then you have your option of choosing to use like an earth moat or a death moat. So once again, moats are going to go up in price. You don't gain any percentage here for using something like a petal cap. The only thing you would gain percent for would be using like another earth shell and a blight moth and then you might get an extra chance to proc an additional potion but at that point you're using three and you might as well just use those to make something else right so coatings are going to be going up and then we're going to be talking about the potions in here so the tinctures are going to be next on the list the infused blight tinctures and the infused corrupted tinctures are going to be very powerful because they are going to allow you to get rid of afflictions and afflictions matter in the heavy dungeons right in the high level mutated dungeons if you are blighted it's pretty much game over right you're dead if you are corrupted and you're taking additional corrupt damage while you're fighting monsters, you have a very high chance to die. So you want to have these because even at Dynasty Shipyard, we've seen monsters that are casting abilities that are going to lower your corruption resistance. They're going to damage you with corruption resistance instead of actual damage. And then if your uh, resistance meets that zero threshold, you're going to take a big burst of damage and that's not going to be good. Uh, the same with Blight, since the... Dungeons are being buffed now with the mutated versions. I'm imagining that the Blight's Keeper or the Alluvium Marl guy, the second boss of Genesis or first boss of Genesis, whatever you want to call him, uh, he is going to leave that trail of Blight. And since he's going to be stronger and more resistant to everything, he's probably going to Blight your entire squad. So you're going to need to bring some of these infused Blight tinctures to kind of survive that battle. The next on the list is going to be Ward Potions, but mainly just Angry Earth, Ancient Ward, and Corrupted Ward. These are going to be the three uh, enemy types that you're going to be dealing with for now. That list may expand later if we see, like, Lost or anything else, like maybe Amorine Dungeon come into the mix for mutations, but so far it's not there, uh, so just keep an eye out for that. So for the Tinctures, it's going to be Earthshell and Spinefish are going to be the two main ingredients, and you can supplement any random water moat, so that's not too bad there. And then for the angry, or for the ancient ward potions, as well as angry earth, you're going to have the earth shell and spinefish once again, and then supplementing two random moats of a certain type. So moats going up, and all elemental animals recede from the moats that you can collect. And then finally, we have the absorption potions, which I believe right now there are a few types of damage. It is going to be void, fire, nature and ice so far that's been listed for the mutations so all of these are going to go up that's going to be the corresponding moats for that type as well as an earth shell or spine fish so these are going to be consumed quite frequently especially in the super high level keys so if you don't have these already make sure to go ahead and get some of them they're very easy to farm too so this could be a nice time to sell some of these items these earth shell turtle uh, tails i know on my server they're already up to like 20 30 gold a piece it's crazy and i'm sure that these moats along the way can also be sold so there's a lot of opportunity to make big money here, whether that be with the base ingredients itself before the patch happens or with the actual potions themselves when the patch hits. So a lot of uh, kind of chances that you could have there to make quite a large amount of gold. So now we'll go ahead and talk about the other consumables that you will have. When you do a run, you're going to be using rabbit food. This is going to be a 40 constitution food. And the reason why you're going to be using this one is because the counterparts for it, the strength and the dex and the intellect are all requiring a legendary fish, which is very hard to get. So it makes a lot more sense, like you see on my stat screen here, to have 300 focus and 160 con. And then I will use that rabbit food to push my constitution to 200, which trust me, you're going to need in these mutated dungeons because if you don't have a health pool you're going to get smacked really fast and you're going to not know what happened to you uh, so these are going to be very very crucial you're going to need to use one a run at least so the demand for these are going to go up and that's going to come from cooking so all of the ingredients required to make that rabbit food are going to go up in price 
Um, I don't have the recipe on the PTR, so I unfortunately I can't show you all the ingredients for it. But I believe it's the Sumptuous Rabbit is the main component that is very expensive for this one. And it's just a rare uh, material required from skinning a rabbit. So that's going to be a good go-to. So the price of these will go up. You could invest now and make a large sum of money, especially if you hold on to these going into the Mutated Dungeon start. So, we'll talk about other consumables that we're going to use, and that for this one, we're going to head to the forge, and we'll talk about one side note, which will actually be a weapon. So, in the forge here, we're going to go ahead and look at the powerful honing stone. This will be going up in value, because now people need to min-max in order to have the best result in the highest mutated dungeon levels. There is a reason to have in-game content now, and therefore everybody will be using max consumables instead of the cheap ones. So that means that the price of death motes and fire motes is going to go way up because they require quintessence in order to make this powerful honing stone. You also see the obsidian void stone, which means that these will also probably go up as well. That's made from lodestone and the uh, smashing of the green lodestone type deals. So you can go ahead and make those and create them. They will also go up in value. So that's going to be through stone cutting and then these two through just moats in general and using arcana to combine them. And there's probably some good profit to be made there because if you can combine the moats up into the death quintessence and proc extra death quintessence through arcana, you're going to be making a considerably large amount of cash especially if you get lucky so that could be something nice to keep in mind so with the weapon honing stone the coating covered the food covered all that good stuff covered uh, we will finally be going over towards the armor smithing station or the outfitting station and talk about a few things here and then i'll finally get back to that note on uh, a weapon that will be going up in price and we'll also talk about timeless shards to wrap all that up so going down here, we are going to see a high demand for powerful gemstone dust, as well as oak, uh, powerful oak flesh bomb. Man, this one's always hard to say. <laughs> so this one's going to go up in price. You can see that the uh, powerful gemstone dust is just going to require three of any type of gems. Pristine pearls apparently also work. So you can go ahead and use that if you want, but those are generally more expensive than the other pieces. So now you finally have a a reason to use all of these gems and it looks like it does require jewel crafting to make so jewel crafters are going to be able to create this item that is going to be in very high demand the next one is going to be the oak flesh bomb which is going to reduce physical damage and it's going to be used by tanks especially when they're pulling large packs of monsters together so the price for earth modes and water modes are going to go up because everyone's going to need these quintessence and once again arcana is going to profit immensely being able to proc additional values for these so it's going to be very nice to have oil might go up a tiny bit but it's not that big of a deal, honestly. I, I don't see it going up way too much, to be fair. Uh, so now we will finally dip into Timeless Shards and probably talk a bit about... Uh, weapon craft mods and crafting in general because there are going to be some armor and weapon pieces that you're going to want to look out for. So let's go ahead and head over to the forge and the first thing that's going to be on our list is this bad boy here, Orichalcum Tower Shield. That's right, tanks are useful. Very useful now. They are actually in very high demand and if you can be a good tank and a high level mythic or not mythic but mutated dungeon then you will very you will be in really high demand right i almost think you could sell your tanking services at this point because not everyone's going to have the gear set nor the ability to pull this off and most groups are going to get held up by not having a tank or not having a healer but most likely not having a tank, right? And Ori Calcum Talib Shield is going to go up in big value because everything hits so hard in mutated dungeons. So hard. It's actually insane. Blocking is one of the only things you can do to survive their damage. And the Tower Shield has the highest blocking stability of any weapon in the game. In addition to that, people are going to be wanting to create a 600 version of a Tower Shield so that they can upgrade their Tower Shield to 625. So I'm going to go ahead and assume and I definitely know for sure that timeless tower shield shards are going to shoot through the roof because everyone's going to be trying to craft a tower shield 
with the proper abilities like Sturdy. That's going to be a crafting mod that we'll talk about. I believe it's a Shard of Cobalt. It is going to go up in value because everyone's going to need a high level tower shield with Sturdy on it because it's going to increase the amount of uh, block or stamina drain that your shield's going to take. And if you can keep blocking forever, you don't take damage, and that means the enemies are not life leeching off of you, which means your run is going incredibly fast. Not to mention you're all not dying, which is always a good thing. Uh, so this has got to go up in value, so we will see a high demand for shields. We will also see a high demand for other armor pieces, and that's just going to be everything in general, right? This is going to come from heavy, medium, and light armor, because people want to mix and match to get the right weight category. But I think the highest demand is going to come from medium armor and heavy armor, because you cannot exist without medium armor in the high level mutation dungeons trust me light is not the way you to go you will get destroyed very fast you kind of need medium armor there might be a scenario where if you were like an insane player an actually insane player you might be able to squeeze light out of there especially if you're like an archer maybe if you're a bow player or a very far back mage but a lot of times it's going to get nitty gritty and you're going to be taking elemental damage all over the place not just where the monsters are hitting but even triggers and procs on yourself abilities that you're going to have to dodge and it's just much better if you're in medium armor you're going to get a lot more effective health not to mention extra dodges because the medium armor has a lower dodge range so that's going to make medium armor a good category to go for but it does use a mix of some heavy and some light pieces so in this range you're going to see a lot of people trying to use timeless shards to create 600 versions of armor exactly like this right getting something with corrupted ward right this this damage type that we have to deal with in dynasty shipyard to reduce damage against the corrupted enemies i almost think this is going to be mandatory it's pretty close to being mandatory right because you need to reduce the amount of damage these enemies are doing they're doing a lot they're doing a lot and especially if your gear score is not caught up there seems to be some sort of weird uh gear score scaling factor within the mutations so it recommends a certain level of gear score and if you're not there you're just taking more damage and dealing less damage to the enemies which is just going to make the run way more complicated so getting high level pieces of armor with corrupted ward with ancient ward and with angry earth ward will help you a lot especially if they have good abilities on them going into the dungeons especially when you get towards the higher mutations of like 10 you know high hard difficulty extreme difficulty that's probably where you're going to need it the most so timeless shards and then that means that the crafting mods appropriate for those are going to go up so things like this brilliant corrupted insignia will go up a tiny bit because it absorbs angry earth damage although i think it's been so long that people have so many of these that it may not go up very much to be honest so i wouldn't invest fully in this but it may go up a tiny bit but for things like um crafting mods for like skills and stuff like that especially for like tower shields are probably going to go up in price and just timeless shards in general because people are going to be trying to roll those corrupted armors with good perks and good abilities so they're going to keep doing that over and over until they hit a 600 piece that has like the perfect desirable stats because there are good gear pieces in the mutated dungeons themselves but they don't exactly always have the perfect stat line and to get one completely randomized is a little rough so you could supplement that with crafting and increase your odds. So crafters are going to be making a nice deal of profit, creating armor that has absorption type for ancients, for angry earth, and for corrupted. And you will also be able to use that timeless shard system to kind of lock in and control that factor. So we will see a big boom in everything that's going to be used for mutations. So that is, in summary, is going to be the stone cutting station, as well as all consumables coming from Arcana, coming from the forge coming from the armor all of the stuff is going to be used so that rabbit food that honing stone that uh, corruption board potions all these things are going to be materials that are going to be used by high level players trying to clear the high mutation dungeons and trust me they got gold and it's easy to get it from their pockets into your pockets and this is a great way to go ahead and do so so those are going to be some of the things that you should look out for to invest in come the next patch and hopefully that will definitely give you a large chunk of gold so that you can use that yourself to make some nice traction and leeway within the mutated dungeons 
All right, thanks for your time, everyone. That's going to be it for this video. Make sure to subscribe, like, and hit the bell if you found this information helpful. We also have a join button if you're interested in becoming a member today and staying on top of information just like this, as well as a Discord and social medias if you want to follow us on there. Thank you for your time and watching this video, and we will catch you in the next one.